window 20th. That's the question of the hour as the Artane band marches off the field. A scurry of photographers away from the center of the pitch. Referee John Maloney checking the time. Brian Mullins in the foreground on the right, Bernard Brogan behind him, Joe Kernan in the foreground on the left, and Colin McKinstry behind him. The ball is in, the game is on. Joe Kernan for Armagh. Pat O'Neill gone back now for Dublin. Tony Hanno and Pat Moriarty to going for it. This is Jim McCurr. Leo Driscoll not getting it. Sean Doherty covering off well there for Dublin. And the referee awards him a free. About 60 yards out from his own goal. Kevin Moran to take it. Dublin playing favoured by Wind and Sun in this first half. for Armagh. It's about 35 yards out from the Armagh goal. Oh, intended pass there that went very much astray and Brian Mullins gets it. Tom McCreese getting back to it. You can see the damage that the rain has done. These players skidding all over the place. Jimmy Keevey. A goal! Oh, what a goal! What a goal by Jimmy Keevey! from an almost impossible angle, about a minute and a half gone of the game, and Jimmy Keaveney sending that one in from a most awkward position. What an amazing score. And there he is, Jimmy Keaveney, who, that's his second goal in the North Ireland final, but what an amazing one that was. Dublin, one goal, Armagh, no score, and here come the Dubs again. And Jimmy Keaveney takes a shot, and this one from an easy angle, he sent it wide. Dublin, one goal, Armagh, no score, and we are now just two minutes gone in the first half. Oh, what an amazing goal that was. Well, the ball being placed now by Brian McElindon for the kick out. What an expensive skill that was by Tom McCreech. And this is Anthony O'Toole now. Out of the wing for Bobby Doyle. Bobby shot, and it is wide. Well, that's uh, three shots by Dublin, one in the net and the other two wide. Bobby Doyle, the misser of that one. Brian McElindon plays the ball for the kick out again. This is Paddy Moriarty. Referee waving on the play, giving him advantage there. He sends a high one upfield. Robbie Kelleher not holding on to it. Gone back to it now is Pat O'Neill. Sean Devlin is after him. Brian Mullins and Joe Kernan together. Brian Mullins. The wandering Bobby Doyle. I don't know where that was supposed to go, but it went up to Jim McCurr, who's following Bobby wherever he goes. This is Joe Kernan, Armagh setting down a good deal better now after a disastrous start. And uh, Gail Driscoll going for the ball over there with Peter Lachlan. This is David Hickey, that's Tom McCree, belting the ball out over the sideline under pressure there. About 60 yards out from the Armagh goal, Tommy Drum to take it. And he sends a short one to where Jimmy Keevey might have been if he was 10 foot tall. He wasn't, it went over his head and it went wide. And Dublin, thanks to that Jimmy Keevey goal, leading by one goal to no score. <laughs> Brian McAlinden now.
Glenn Mullen feeding high in the air there. They're trying to, the Dublin team, trying to use these wings as much as possible. Dennis Stevenson and John McCarthy going through. Definitely good to free to Armagh. That's the 50-yard line just beside the ball there. Kenny Moriarty. Larry Kearns coming out for it. Pat O'Neill for Dublin getting his boot to it. This is Jim McCurr. Bernard Brogan after him. And Peter Trainer trying to get the ball, but he decides it's no use in bursting a gizzard trying to get there. I notice that Peter Trainer has gone top of the left and Peter Lochran has gone full forward on the Armagh team momentarily anyway. Gail Driscoll. And the ball favor there by Joey Donnelly. Back to Penny Moriarty. Joe Devlin gets his hand up to it. This is Devlin again now. And Armagh really moving at this stage. He's been chased by Robbie Kelleher. He takes a shot and it is gone wide. That, I think, is Armagh's first wide of the game as Sean Devlin went racing up the sideline there. The score, Dublin one goal, Armagh no score. Six minutes gone in the first half. Paddy Cullen placing the ball for the kickout. who saved a penalty in the 1974 final against Galway. He's standing in the goal, and Paddy Moriarty is standing in front of him. There's the whistle, and here comes Paddy. A goal! Sean Doherty gets the ball. And look at the players skidding all around the place still. Bobby Doyle, a lovely little pass there that if only the Dublin man knew it was coming. Bobby and Jimmy Smith. And the referee penalises Jimmy and there is a free for Dublin. Bobby Doyle was almost going to take it from 60 yards of his own goal. But uh, I think it was just to give players time to get up. And he leaves the ball now to Tommy Drum. Anybody out the foul Paddy, the king of armour, leads that one out over the sideline, line ball for Dublin. One goal apiece, nine minutes gone in the first half. Brian Mullins is going to have a go at this one, it's about uh, 60 yards out from the armour goal, he's going to take a short one. And it's so short because into the hand of the way to Joe Kernan, his kick is blocked down. And this is Bobby Doyle going through, Bobby taking a shot, and Bobby sending it over the bar, it's a point all right, everybody waits with bated breath when Bobby takes a shot, that one over the bar, making the score now, Dublin one goal and one point, Armagh one goal after just over nine minutes of play. Brian McAlinden placed the ball just outside the 21-yard line for the kick-out. And 
the whistle that you hear is uh, the verdict of the hill on the placing of the ball. Callum McKinstry going up with it with Bernard Brogan and the referee penalises the Armagh man and awards a free to Dublin. Brian Mullins to take it. Another short one. Bobby Doyle over on the right wing this time. Trying to draw Jim McCair and Jim slipping. The Ooh! A would-be tackle by Paddy Moriarty. No doubt about that one from Bobby Doyle. And that makes the South Dublin one goal and two points. Two Armagh's one goal. Bobby Doyle working his way through there and he's certainly leading Jim McCair a merry dance because Jim isn't too sure whether to uh, follow him or not. And just looking at Bobby now, Bobby is standing 50 yards out from the Armagh goal. This ball placed on the 21-yard line, Brian McAlinden's kick to this side of the field. Joe Kernan going high for it, in the centre of the field for Armagh. He's fouled by David Hickey, and it's a free to the Ulster champions. Dennis Stevenson going over to place it for Paddy Moriarty to kick it. Or is he? No, Dennis Stevenson's going to kick it himself. Robbie Kelleher, Sean Devlin getting the ball. Into the centre now to Joe Kernan. And the slip there, the slipping, that was Peter Lochran who slipped there when he seemed to be in position to get possession, but uh, the slip was very expensive. Because now it's Dublin attacking again. Paddy Moriarty. Held as he works his way upfield, and there's a free for Armagh. Dennis Stevenson to take it. Sean Devlin coming down for it. And an intended pass out there to the far side to Noel Marley. And Noel has to battle to try to get to it. Back to David Hickey. With them, Kevin Rafferty. And here's Robbie Kelleher up now in the attack for Dublin. And that's Bobby Doyle. And that's why... That's what I meant about Bobby when he shoots sometimes, but he has scored two points and Dublin lead by those two points. One goal and two points, two Armagh's, one goal. Dublin's goal scored from a very, very acute angle by Jimmy Keaveney. Armagh's goal scored by a driving penalty by Paddy Moriarty. Joey Donnelly for Armagh. This is Tommy Drum. This is Bernard Broken. And that's Bobby Doyle. Still Bobby Doyle. And that's a goal by Bobby Doyle. forward line gets moving, it makes it look so very, very easy. Bobby taking that pass from Bernard Brogan, and here he is again now, Bobby Doyle sidestepping his man, and then crashing the ball into the top left-hand corner of the net, much the same as Jimmy Keefley did earlier. The score now, Dublin 2-2, Armagh, one goal. In the centre of the field, Kevin Rafferty now for Armagh. Going higher there than Peter Trainer. And the ball got over the sideline, line ball for Armagh. Dennis Stevenson to take it up under the shadow that creeps over the Hogan stand in these September evenings. And he kicks it. The linesman signals that he has kicked it out over the sideline. It must have been a curl on it because when it got in on the field further up and landed, in fact, it was about two yards inside. But the linesman was right on the spot, Brian Mullins. The short one, so short, in fact, that Joe Kernan is penalised for being too near the ball when Brian kicks it. Gone harmlessly over the end line and wide. 2-2 two, two to a goal, eight points to three in favour of the All-Ireland champions.
Lymecker Linden seeking a good spot from which to kick the ball out. Colin McKinstry now, without the beard, of course, today. And here's Noel Barney going up the field with a solo run. Nicely tipped out now to Joe Kernan. Joe 40 yards out. He's forgotten something. Kevin Morland clearly under pressure over the sideline, and it's a line ball for our man. About 60 yards out from the Dublin goal, Joey Donnelly. Colin McKinstry. Colin's shot is also very, very wide. Score remains Dublin, eight points, or if you prefer, two goals and two points. Armagh, one goal, or if you prefer, three points. Eight points to three. 15 minutes gone, first half. Paddy Cullen. Down in the centre towards Bernard Brogan. Ryan Mullins giving now. Jimmy Smith getting the ball for Armagh. John uh, Pat O'Neill back there. Pat, <laughs> Pat O'Neill skidding, holding the ball on the ground, just showing what the rain did to the ground. And this is a free to be taken by Jimmy Smith, who was so accurate in the semi-finals against Roscommon. of play in this uh, first half, making the score now. Dublin two goals and two points. Armagh one goal and one. Paddy Cullen standing back for the kick out again. Ryan Mullins having a field day with the center of the field. Not having a field day in his delivery of the ball up the field, as you could see. Paddy Moriarty to take this uh, line ball. Tommy Drum, Paul Barley standing behind them there, and Tommy Drum taking full advantage of it. This is Tony Hanna, who gone out. Tony shouldered off the ball by Tom McCreesh, and there is a line ball for. Dublin, the linesman signalling a line ball to Dublin to be taken by Bobby Doyle from about 16 yards out. And he taps it back to awaiting Jimmy Keaveney, and nobody seemed to be bothering about Jimmy Keaveney. But Jimmy taps it over the bar with the kick to see. And I think that is the softest point that Jimmy Keaveney has ever got in an All Ireland final. Making the score now Dublin two goals and three points. Armagh, four points, 18 minutes gone. Brian McElindon's kick. Barry Cairns in now to Kevin Rafferty. Up to Sean Devlin. Just a little bit too high for him. Sean Doherty tries to keep it in play, doesn't succeed. Line ball to Armagh. 55 yards out from the Dublin goal. Once again, under the shadow of the Hogan stand. Kevin Rafferty, up to Peter Trainer. Trainer across towards Noel Marley. And skid, skid, skid. Marley back now to Sean Devlin. And skid, skid, skid again. Out now to Peter Trainer, into Sean Devlin. Peter Trainer again, and this time it's Anthony O'Toole to David Hickey. Tom McCreesh was touching the hop of the ball there. Goes now towards Dennis Stevenson, and the referee has penalised Dennis for throwing the ball on the ground. He threw it on the ground to hop it back up to his own man. It hopped up all right, but referee John Maloney said that that ball wasn't thrown. 
Two goals and three points for Dublin, one goal and one point for Arbaugh. Jimmy Keaveney now to try for another point. And he makes no mistake, making it now two goals and four points for Dublin. Arbaugh, one goal and one. Well, it's ten points to four in favour of the All-Ireland champions after 20 minutes of play. Joey Donnelly and Anton too. And Joey kicking it right out into the crowd and what a packed crowd it is under the music stand. Line ball for Dublin to be taken by Brian Mullins just about on the halfway line. Sean Kaplan and Robbie Kelleher together, Robbie getting it down, and the referee penalising Dublin for a foul there on Colin McKinstry. Peter Lachman, the Ultras come after him. Kevin Morgan, Larry Kearns aboard him, and there's a free out for Dublin. Cullen to take it as he steps back now. Centre field, the ball breaking out now to Larry Kearns, and this is Jimmy Smith. Jimmy Smith coming up the right wing, and Jimmy Smith belting it out into the area to the right of the goal. And Armagh now have had three wides, they've had one goal and one point. Dublin have had a total of two goals and four points, and five wides. And the break of the ball in the centre of the field, Brian Mullins out to Tommy Drum. Dublin getting an awful lot of loose play. Tony Hanahog on inside to try and get that one, but uh, no, he can't make it. He couldn't possibly make it. At just ran away from him and kept going and went wide. Just looking around to see if there are any positional switches. There don't seem to be any at this stage anyway. Brian McAlendon. Bobby Doyle into Anton O'Toole. Anton O'Toole left footed and it's gone to the left, it's just gone wide. Well, there was goal written all over that, only it got slightly misdirected in the last uh, yard or two, just veered to the left and went wide. But Dublin leading by six points at this stage, ten points to four. But a fielding there in the centre of the field by Bernard Brogan to Anton O'Toole. Anton penalised for holding on too long, and there's a free for Armagh. Joey Donnelly trying to kick it over to his own man, but Anton O'Toole was standing too close, and there's a free now for Armagh. And this one advanced up about uh, 15 yards or so. And I think there's some switches coming off now, but we'll follow that in just a moment. Jim McCarr has just stolen a yard or two and the linesman is coming in to recover it and put it back where it was. Now it is where it was. Dennis Stevenson with uh, Jim McCarr playing at right full back. Dennis Stevenson getting the job now of following the wandering Bobby. Peter Lachlan. Larry Kern. Peter Trainer. Goes into the centre now to Joe Kernan. And Joe, another one as wide as a gate. And that's the sixth wide, or the fourth wide for Armagh. And some of them certainly seen from scoring chances. The picking off of points from out the field was a feature of the Armagh play earlier in the year, but not today. David Hickey. 
Bobby Doyle with Dennis Stevenson after him. This is Pat O'Dean. This is Jimmy Keesey, that was. Tom McCreesh and John McCarthy. McCreesh getting there. Referee, a free out now. Referee awarding a free out to Armagh for a push in the back there by Anton O'Toole. Tom McCreesh, the most experienced man on the Armagh team. Holds four Railway Cup titles for Ulster. Colin McKinstry at three, but Kevin Morland with the ball now. Bernard Brogan. Dennis Stevenson. Stretching there, but the stretch worked as it went to Kevin Rafferty. Jimmy Smith gone back to help him and uh, the referee awarding a free to Armagh from just inside the Armagh 70. Jim McCurr to take it, but he decides instead of a quick one, he'll have a slow one and places the ball and now back for the kick. And he kicks it straight out over the sideline and there's no doubt that Armagh have some kind of Old Ireland final jitters or something because they certainly are a far better team than they are showing down there at the moment. Robbie Kelleher, Anton O'Toole going for it, but the ball knocked away by Joey Donnelly and the Dublin Bowl. Brian Mullins, that's Jim McCarr. Keaveney on the ground back behind momentarily appealing for a three but uh, the referee waving the play on this is Joey Donnelly still Joey Donnelly this is Joe Kernan and that is Dale Driscoll John McCarthy coming out looking for the ball he gets it to Bernard Rogan Tony Hanahoe coming out too now it's Bernard Rogan all alone but the referee penalizes Tony Hanahoe for a third man tackle there. And the three inside the Armagh 50 yard line will be taken. They just can't make up the mind who's going to take it. Kevin Rafferty is going over to it now. Dublin apparently had some dissent about that because uh, the ball has been moved out a fair bit from where the three actually took place. And now the Dublin duckout looking at. Uh, the action from their particular point of view. No anxieties at this moment. Paddy Moriarty. Kevin Moran. And the referee penalising Armagh for a foul on Kevin Moran. The free being given where the ball landed. The foul took place just as he kicked the ball. Johnny Hanahoe and Paddy Moriarty apparently well it looked from up here that he had knocked it out of his hand but uh, the linesman who's right on the spot saw that Tony must have brought it out over the sideline so it's a line ball to our bar. And now there's Jimmy Smith breaking away into Peter Trainer. Comes out now to Sean Devlin on the 14-yard line, and it's curved over the bar, and it's a point. Very, very nearly curled to the right of the bar and went wide, but it went over from Sean Devlin after 29 minutes of play. So the here it is into Sean Devlin. Sean takes his shot, and it's just high in the frame there but it was over the bar and it's Dublin 10 points Armagh 5 Bernard Brogan 2-4 to 1-2 6 minutes left in this first half Paddy Moriarty and the ball going towards the sideline over the sideline and Pat O'Neill will take the line ball for Dublin a quick one to David Hickey. And to no two. Brian Mullins in there, but out comes Tom McLeish. 
Harry Kern just slipping at the wrong moment. Jimmy Smith signaling to Sean Devlin, it's coming your way. It did, but Bobby Kelleher was there as well. Robbie has brought it out over the sideline. Line ball for Armagh. And what this ball, what this ball game means at this particular moment is a goal for Armagh to keep it alive for the second half. brought one but for the presence of Gail Driscoll, Joe Kernan, Antelo too, Noel Marley, come up, come up he says and it won't come up but Antelo too gets it away. Line ball Armagh, 50 yards out from their own goal. Paddy Moriarty, the scorer of that penalty. Brian Mullins fielding with brilliance in the centre of the field and here comes Kevin Borden in one of his solos but he doesn't get very far with the solo he passes the ball into Bobby Doyle back now to John McCarthy McCarthy in front of the goal it's a point that was one of those anti-climax shots he looked as if he had a goal at his mercy he decided to take the gift that came his way and he kicked it over the bar the score now Two goals and five points for Dublin, one goal and two points for Armagh after 31 minutes of this first half. Brian McAlinden having a busy time kicking the ball out down there. Kevin Moran, who started in one of his offensive exploits a moment ago and didn't quite get room to go all the way through with it. Jimmy Keevney in possession but uh, pushed in the back and there is a free to Dublin from 40 yards out and Jimmy Keevney isn't taking it or is he? Jimmy Keevney is there but just to his right is Bobby Doyle between them it is Jimmy is going to have a go at it he's already scored a goal and two points in the game comes to Antidote to John McCarthy and it's another goal it's another goal John McCarthy the scorer and that makes the score Dublin three goals and five points are now one goal and two and a moment ago I said what this game needs is a goal for Arma and here it is the line ball coming across from Jimmy Keefley in in front of the goal held there, passed in now to John McCarthy and John palms it into the goal and Dublin in a clear lead. We're back now with the action of this first half with Bernard Brogan putting the dubs back into the attack again. Two minutes left in this first half. David Hickey into Bobby Doyle. Bobby Doyle brought down quite unceremoniously there and referee John Maloney having a very stern word with Joe Kernan, writing his name in the book as Bobby Doyle is being attended to. And here it is. Well, they are uh, just attending to Bobby out now in the area in front of the Armagh goal, about 35 yards out to the region of them. Jimmy Keefe is going to take it. And Jimmy sends it over the bar for another point for Dublin, another point for Jimmy Keaveney, making the score now Dublin, three goals and six points, Armagh, one goal and two. Jimmy Keaveney has scored a total of one goal and three points so far in this game. The record for an individual in an All-Ireland final is by my good friend Frank Stockwell of Galway, who back in the 50s got two goals and five points in the 60-minute final. Will Jimmy Keaveney or anybody else beat that total today? Well, that's one of the things the second half will show. And unless Armagh wake up, I don't think the second half is going to show an awful lot more, but they are an awful lot better than they appear up to now. This is Jim McCurr. a free in, the referee awarding a free there for uh, Noel Barney against Gail Driscoll on the 14-yard line. 
Peter Loughran is going to take it. There's what it's like from behind the goal, the ball there on the left. And it's over the bar, a point. Peter Loughran making no mistake about it. And seeing the colours of the Armagh followers, they are not downhearted in any way, although they trail at this moment with the score. Three goals and six points for Dublin, one goal and three points for Armagh, and we're very, very near the half-time whistle. John Maloney blowing that half-time whistle, and so after the first half, in which the All-Ireland champions Dublin were masters from the first minute, the teams leave the field, with Dublin heading for their dressing room towards the left, and Armagh heading for their dressing room towards the right. The score, Dublin 3-8, Armagh 1-3. Uh, correction, 3-6, 3-6 to 1-3. And there is the throw-in, and Jimmy Smith, the first to get it for Armagh. And this is Colin McKinstry, into Jimmy Smith. Out to the wing to Sean Devlin. Devlin is shot, and it hits the post! Oh, what hard luck! Back out now again. Joe Kernan to Sean Devlin. To Larry Kern, the ball knocked away from him, and Robbie Kenneher coming away. What an escape there for Dublin. Anton O'Toole, fouled in possession, and the three to Dublin. That was a lovely move by Armagh, and we almost had the same electrifying start for the Armagh men to the second half as Dublin provided to the first. Kevin Moran now for the kick, just on the 50-yard line. Hanhoe and Petty Moriarty together and it is a line ball for Armagh 35 yards out from their own goal Petty Moriarty that's Tommy Drum oh feeding alone Jimmy Keeney and Dennis Stevenson running back there but uh, in his anxiety to grab the ball over the end line with it, and it's a 50, and one of the Armagh men not too happy with one of the Dubliners, as you saw there, a bit of a, a pushing match going on after Dennis Stevenson was gone out. In fact, it's not a 50, it's a, a uh, kick out. I thought it was a 50. In fact, it's a free out. The referee penalizes the Dublin man for a, a trip on Dennis Stevenson. Kick out to the center of the field. This is David Hickey. Armagh throwing everything into it now. Bobby Doyle, Jimmy Smith. Bobby Doyle for Dublin. David Hickey for Dublin. Out along the wing. There's a Dubliner everywhere. This time it's Bernard Grove. And now it's Brian Mullins. And now it's Jimmy Keeney. And another goal! Another goal for Jimmy Keeney. Crashing that one home. Two goals and three points he scored. He's within two points of an all-time record. Here it is. Brian Mullins out to Jimmy Keefe. And the man who leaves Jimmy Keefe that loose, well, he has to pay the penalty. Well, Jimmy up to today had scored a goal in 16 in All-Ireland Finals. Now he scored two goals and three in this one alone. And the score is 4-6 to 1-3 in favour of Dublin. Only three minutes gone in the second half. Joey Donnelly. And that's an Armagh ball as it went off Tommy Drum, who's appealing uh, that it didn't, but I don't think even he believes it. Jimmy Smith. Joe Kernan to Jimmy Smith. That's Peter Trainer, and that, oh, it's hit the up line. That's the second time Armagh have, that one's gone wide, the second time they've hit the post at the early stages of the second half. 4-6 to 1-3, Dublin the clear leaders. But certainly Armagh unlucky with that one, that he didn't go over the bar, and certainly unlucky earlier that uh, a ball that looked to be heading to the left 
corner of the net, hit the upright and came back into play. Hanson O'Toole. Bernard Brogan, Hanson O'Toole. Getting inside Joey Donnelly. Tom McLeish going out for it, Tony Hanahoe going out for it. Hanahoe up to Jimmy Keithley again on the loose. Tom McLeish trying to get after him. Back into John McCarthy. And John sends it high and John sends it wide. Well, Dublin have had eight wides and Armagh have had five. But of course, Dublin have had four goals and six points, and Armagh have had one goal and three. There's Bernard Brogan, tripped as he's going through by Colin McKinstry, and there is a free in for Dublin. Dead straight in front of the goal. Jimmy Keaveney to take it, as if he sends this one over, it will be two goals and four points for him in this game. And the record for an individual player in an All-Ireland final, two goals and five points, a 60-minute final by Frank Stockwell back in the 50s. Well, they're attending to one of the uh, Ma men. It's Kevin, it's not, no, it's not Kevin Rafferty. They're attending to him down near the goal and Jimmy Keaveney standing over. It is, in fact, Paddy Moriarty, and that would be absolute disaster if he had to go off the field. There he goes back, hopping back towards a position in the goal as Jimmy walks up and Jimmy sends it over the bar for another point for Dublin making the score now Dublin the very clear leaders with four goals and seven points to Armagh's one goal and three 19 points to six six minutes gone second half David Hickey. Blind Mullins. And the referee penalising Blind for holding on to the ball too long, I would say. A quickly taken free that comes back out to Anton O'Toole. Nicely blocked down there by Joe Kernan. Anton O'Toole now playing ducks, drakes and geese with the ball. And it's easy knowing there isn't a point between the sides with the ease with which he sent that one wide. 19 points to six. Ten minutes gone of the 35 in this second half. Arma have not scored so far in the second half. On the kick out. Even the deflections going Dublin's way now. Pat O'Neill up to David Hickey. Out to Bobby Doyle. It's probably more conspicuous today than in any game for ages and ages. And Tony Hanahoe, a quick pass there to John McCarthy, but nicely intercepted by Patty Moriarty. This is Tommy Drum. Anton O'Toole. We'll have Meadowlark Lemon in here in a minute. There's Brian Mullins with the ball. But the referee awards a free. And it is to Armagh. Just a general hold. No, it's not it's to Dublin. I'm just wondering, there's a general hold up and play. Everybody's standing around. It's to Dublin, about 35 yards out. And Jimmy Keefley has now equaled the all time record for an individual score in an All Ireland final, scoring his second goal and fifth point there, making the score four goals and eight points for Dublin, one goal and three points for Armagh. Eight minutes gone in this second half. Joe Kernan, and it's certainly not Joe's fault. Referee penalizing Bernard Brogan for a little bit of holding there. Paddy Moriarty now to take this free. Larry Kearns and Pat O'Neill, and the referee penalises Pat O'Neill, and there's a free to Jimmy Smith for Armagh. Just inside the 50, that's the 50-yard line there. Nice one.
one and it's gone just to the left and it's gone wide and the score remains 4-8 to 1-3. Dublin leading. Here's Paddy Cullen now. Placing the ball for the kick out which he himself will take. The most experienced man on the Dublin team. Noel Barley. And an Armagh ball. Ball knocked out of Noel Barley's hand there by Tommy Drum and it's an Armagh ball. At least it looked one from up here but uh, the referee checking with the linesman and it is an Armagh ball. Noel Barley to take it. Wonderful finger he is. And away they come. And that was Gail Driscoll. Jim McCares driving belt there going to Anton O'Toole. Still Anton and another shot comes out there off Tom the Freeze and is still down. This is Colin McKinstry. Peter Lockram. And Sean Doherty going for it together. Up under the shadows there. Line ball for Dublin. Gail Driscoll going back to take it. Up along this wing. Drum and this is Brian Mullins again. Anton O'Toole is inside him. Tony Hanaho is inside him. Crashed into there by Jim McCarroll. Ball got now by Joey Donnelly. Armagh making the substitution now. This is Larry Kearns. Jimmy Smith. Out to Ooh. Joe Kernan. Joe on the 14 yard line is shot and it's a goal! for Dublin, two goals and three points, and here it is again. There goes Joe, right through. There's his shot to the left corner, and it is a goal. Well, the Joey Donnelly is going off the Armagh team, and his place has been taken by Jim Lockran, the younger brother of Peter Lockran. Kick out now there by Paddy Cullen and back on our eye again, Sean Devlin. Up there to Jimmy Smith, Jimmy Smith under pressure there and Kevin Boren kind of intimidates him justifiably and legally, intimidates him into not holding the ball there, not being able to get a hold of it. Paddy Cullen with the kick out, 4-8-2-3. Armagh really going now, Larry turns down with a knock there from Kevin Moran and the referee awarding a free to Armagh dead straight in front of the goal and about 40 yards out. We make it almost 13 minutes gone in the second half. And Armagh, if they had another goal to go with that one, well, we'd have a ball game on our hands. Larry Kearns is up, he's all right, and Jimmy Smith is going to take the free. Here he comes. And he kicks it wide. Anti climax, 4 8 to 2 3. Dublin still the clear leaders. Armagh playing with wind and sun in the second half, and Jimmy, who was so effective in the semi final from his place kicking, not quite so effective today. He's just got the one point. Larry Kearns. Dangerous kind of a ball there, but Paddy Cullen in perfect control, as ever. Pat O'Neill, out now towards Bernard Brogan. 
And the ball very near the sideline over there. Paddy Moriarty is penalised for uh, a push there. And the linesman had his flag up as well. And there's another substitution coming on for our man in just a moment. It's Noel Marley has gone off, but we've followed the play to the far side of the field. It's Brian Mullins. And T uh, Jingle Daly is on. And here comes David Hickey with the shot. And David scoring his point there. Making the score now. Dublin... 21 points or four goals in fact Dublin four goals and nine points to Armagh's two goals and three and there it is again David Hickey taking it and no doubt whatever about it Dingle Daly on as a substitute for Noel Marley in the Armagh team ball very near the sideline there the referee penalizes Anthony O'Toole for a push of Jim Loughran and Armagh trying to stoke things up now Tom McCreech coming down, the score, 4-9 to 2-3. That's 21 points to 9. Nice bit of feed in there, in the center of the feed by Boyle and Rogan. Referee gave him the advantage, which they're turning into account now. Tony Hanahoe and Paddy Moriarty. Moriarty up field now. And certainly Armagh are battling very well now. Peter Trainer with the ball getting inside his man there. And this is Jimmy Smith. This is Joe Kernan. He's on the 21. He's trying to repeat the performance of a moment ago. Jimmy Smith out to the corner now. He's trying to get Peter Lockham trying to get through there. But it's a tough ball down there as Tommy Drum through. This is Dingle Daly. This is Colin McKinstry. In now to Jimmy Smith. Across to Joe Kernan. And it's in another goal. Another goal by Joe Kernan. And look at that crowd. The score now. Four goals and nine points to three goals and three. And here it is again. Colin McKinstry getting it over there. In comes another pass. A shot to the net and it is another goal for Armagh and the scorer Joe Kernan and the score now 4-9 to 3-3 this game has suddenly changed around from being a cakewalk for Dublin to really having them stretched out now to try to hold on to this lead I know it's a good lead but the game has really wakened up Three to Dublin, Gail Driscoll to take it. David Hickey now. Pat O'Neill. Oh, nice. <laughs> it turned out to be a nice uh, clearance there eventually by Dennis Stevenson. This is Dingle Daly. Dingle Dingle over now to Colin McKinstry. Colin McKinstry to Joe Kernan, the man with gold in his foot. But standing in his way there, Robbie Keller, who has stood in the way of so many forwards so often. Bernard Broken, Bobby Doyle, Bobby all alone. Bobby, still Bobby. And oh, almost deflected into the net there by an Armagh man, but Brian McAlinden in possession. Moriarty, the man who almost did the awful deed a moment ago, going to get up now to Gary Kearns. And the referee awarding a free to Armagh. There was a push in the back there on Peter Loughran. The referee let the play go on for a second or two to see if Armagh were getting the advantage. They did not have any advantage from it, so he has awarded them a free. Peter Loughran to take it in front of the goal. And he sends it over the bar, narrowing the gap. I know it's a big gap, but it certainly has been narrowed. The score now, Dublin, four goals and nine points. Armagh, three goals and four. And Peter Loughran, the man who got that one. His second point of the game. Collins kick out, nicely placed to Tommy Drum. 
Joe Cannon fisting it over now towards Jim Lockram. Yeah, oh, the pass that just barely made the distance there to Dennis Stevenson. Kevin Rafferty. These high passes could be very expensive when you're little and playing against big fellows. Dingle Daly now. And Harry Kern's gone in towards full forward there, but the ball belted out under pressure. Why didn't Armagh play like this for the last three quarters of an hour? That's what everybody is asking. Dennis Stevenson. Very near the sideline, but uh, the referee awards him a free for attempted pushing out over the line by two Dubliners. Paddy Moriarty to take it. Halfway line, just in under us. Fifteen minutes left in this game. Peter Loughran with it now. Oh, a dangerous ball, but Paddy Cullen in control. Joe Kernan. Still Joe. A tentative lobbing one there. Nicely got out by Paddy. Robbie Kelleher. Brian Mullins, and away come Dublin again. Up to Bobby Doyle. Bobby Doyle in now towards the free moving, fast acting, ready to blast for a goal. John McCartney, he doesn't blast for a goal, he blasts for a point. And he must have made out the tune with it. A point there by John McCarthy. That's the second time John has gone through, blazing as if he was going to have a goal for a goal and decided to take the point. Dublin 4-10 and Armagh 3-4. Oh, a bad kick out there. And Jimmy Keaveney. Oh, what a lovely point by Jimmy. On the run. Certainly Jimmy having a wonderful game and now he has taken the lead in the championship. No man in an All-Ireland final in history has ever scored more than Jimmy Keaveney, who has now scored two goals and six points. The score here, 4-11 to Armagh, to Armagh's 3-4. Dublin 4-11, Armagh 3-4. Colin McKinstry and Joe Curtin again running onto the ball. He's still going on. They're after him. Kevin Moran robs him and it's legal. But Joe Kernan holds on to him there and there is a free out. What a wonderful run back there by Kevin Moran. And now the final throw of the coin as Armagh make their third substitution. And that is it. That is their last substitution. I think it's Frank Toman who has come on, this former college star. And let's see who's going off. It's Jim McCarroll who's going off. Meanwhile, back with the action, it's Tommy Drum. Frank Tolman going up, pushing the ball down, had to go two in there, getting the ball. David Hickey. Look at Robbie Keller, where he is, back up there. And away now comes Jingle Daly. <laughs> oh, he got it eventually, but he did pick it off the ball, off the ground, so there is a free for Dublin, and that was a bit of hard luck there as Armagh looked like moving away and just that skiddy ground did it again. Brian Mullen, no, no, Jimmy Keeby having made the record is going to make it a little bit harder for those who follow later to catch him. That is if he can send this one over from 55 yards out. And it has gone wide. 23 points to 13 in favour of Dublin. That is the score now, 4-11 to 3-4. And uh, we make it, what, about 23 minutes gone? Second half. By Michael Hinton's kick, Colin McKinstry getting it in the centre of the field. John McCarthy and Brian Mullins combining there. Brian Mullins trying to get it back to Tony Hanahoe, but Jim Loughran is there. This is Tom McCreesh. That's Kevin Rafferty trying to get it up there, and Bernard Brogan after him, but the referee penalises the Dubliner for a push in the back. Pat O'Neill is back at left full back for Dublin with uh, Larry Kearns at top of the right. That's if anybody is playing back there at the moment because they're moving everywhere. This is Dennis Stevenson. Oh, 
play by. Jimmy Smith to take it, and Jimmy's in a hurry. Joe. Kevin Morin. Youngest man in the Dublin team. Foul there, and a three out for Dublin from the 50-yard line, which Kevin himself will take. Kevin has only had one of these solo efforts of his, which bring him from defense into attack, and it didn't really uh, finish off with the Kevin Moore and shot. I just wonder will he try another before the game is over. Interception there by Pat O'Neill. Pat is hurt there, his shoulder is hurt, and eventually got a bit of a push there, but he was hurt just before that push. And the ball gone running through to John McCarthy. David Hickey, Anton O'Toole, Bobby Doyle, and it's another goal! Another goal, Bobby Doyle, the scorer, and that's his second goal of the game. As I said before, when those Dublin forwards get moving, they make it look so easy. Look at this for a passing movement. Anton O'Toole, Bobby coming into the centre, and Ryan had no chance whatever in the goal. And Bobby Doyle has now scored a total of two goals and two points in this game. Can he equal the record of Frank Stockwell? Meanwhile, I think that Pat O'Neill's shoulder seems to be injured, and he is going off. Pat O'Neill is going off the Dublin team. He was injured there with uh, a clash just a moment ago. And Paddy Riley is in the game. Ball eventually breaking to Peter Trainer, who kept waiting for it to come out to him there. And they don't have a man to give it to, except wearing a blue jersey, and that's Sean Darcy. Ball gone out over the sideline, and player from each side momentarily anxious to take it. And Bobby Doyle eventually took it and sent it back to Tommy Drum. It was a Dublin ball, although uh, Dingle Daly for our bar was very anxious to take it there, but uh, there seemed to be a little bit of confusion. Anyway, Jim Lockman with it now for our bar. Paddy Riley. A great terrier. In the Dublin panel, on now. Getting the ball out, David Hickey trying to get to it, not succeeding. And here's Tony Hanaho coming away. All blocked down there, but goes back to Paddy Moriarty. Kevin Rafferty in the centre now to Sean Devlin, who's moved out some time ago into the half line. Dingle Daly now tossing through the Tommy Drum here, just to the left. Brady still with it. But it's a arm arm ball. No arguments about this one. Almost 28 minutes gone, about seven minutes left in the game. Nice ball. A very nice effort, but didn't quite uh, have the finishing touches that were intended. Joe Kernan went very high to try to get to it to get his third goal, but he didn't succeed. Double scoring, Dublin 5-11, Armagh 3-4, that's 26 to 13. Brian Mullins brought down there. There have been only four occasions in the history of the association when there's been a double-double. In other words, that the hurling champions retain their title and the football champions retain theirs. And this certainly looks as if history, modern history, will be made here today. Well, so Devlin. Leo Driscoll getting in there. Jim Lockman, back now to Dennis Stevenson, across to Cullum McKinstry, up along the wing now to Peter Trainer. Humpty Dumpty, back now to Dingle Daly, and 
Dingle went by. It's 5-11 to 3-4 in favour of Dublin. Six minutes between Dublin and another All-Ireland title, their 20th. And the third in four years for this present Dublin panel. Paddy Cullen with the kick out now. How this game came momentarily to life in the second half when Armagh got those couple of goals. And they're still trying very, very hard. This is Jimmy Smith. Kevin Moran standing in front of him. Paddy Cullen again. Kevin Rafferty. This Dublin team, they're so big and they don't look at until you see them beside another team. Only four men on the team are less than six feet tall. And that's Colin McKinstry. This is Peter Trainer. And that's another point for Armagh, scored by Peter Trainer. And now the cheers, while they're there, are just that little bit weaker because the obvious is very obvious. Five goals and 11 points for Dublin, three goals and five points for Armagh. Five minutes left in the game. This is Kevin Morland and Bernard Brogan. Ah. No doubt the ball and ground made breezy by the rain we had before the game. This is Anton O'Toole. And Anton satisfied without any heroics just to take the point. And that's his first point of the game, making the score now. Dublin, five goals and 12 points to Armagh's three goals and five. That's 27 for 14. Dingle Daddy. Jimmy Smith. Smith now in towards Peter Trainer. And Peter's kick is high and into a hill 16 that's beginning to wobble and uh, indeed flow a little bit down there. I think quite a number of the followers are thinking that when the final whistle goes, they will get in on the field, wire or no wire. But there are some men in blue there standing in front of them that are pretty well deciding that they won't. From the kick out, the ball to this side of the field. We're really going through the motions now as Tommy Drum gets it upfield. Kevin Rafferty. Cross now towards Sean Devlin, who in in the corner or out in the centre has been working very hard. So is Jimmy Smith to Sean Devlin. Sean Devlin across to Joe Kernan. Joe with two Dubliners around him. A shot that's good, it's gone over the bar for a point. For a point for Armagh, and that makes the score now. Uh, five goals and 12 points, and three goals and six. Alan Larkin has come on the field for Dublin, and gone off over on the far side. And the fact there are a couple of substitutions here. Bernard Brogan has gone off, but Alan Larkin is uh, on here on this side, this great member of the Dublin panel, a member whose dedication, whether he be a sub or a player, epitomizes the spirit that's behind this Dublin panel. And also on the field now, Jim Brogan. Uh, Bernard Brogan has gone off, definitely. About two minutes left in the game now. This is Gail Driscoll. The game just flowing towards its end. Time running out, about two minutes left in the game, and Dublin, the All-Ireland champions, once again, retaining their title, even though there are two minutes to go. The score, 5-12 to 3-6. And I don't care who did what in the sea of Armagh. There's no way it can be changed now. And Paddy Cullen showing that there's plenty of life in Paddy going up for that one. But he's forgotten something. Peter Loughran's got it now. Three in. And it's going to be another penalty. Or is it? It is, I think, another penalty for Armagh. Their second penalty. 
And I wonder how many minds are going back now to 1953 when Bill McCurry got a penalty for them, when they were far better placed to challenge Kerry than indeed they are at this moment to challenge Dublin. Well, Paddy Moriarty facing up to the penalty and facing the other end is Paddy Cullen, hands on hips. Well, Paddy, the two Paddies. Number six, that's the man to watch. And a great save by Paddy Cullen. A great save by Paddy Cullen. And what a crowning moment for this All-Ireland final, for this goalkeeper who has done so much for them. There's the shot, and there is the save. It's not that the penalty was missed or anything like that. The penalty was saved. And there's the man that did it. He saved one in 74. He saved her at the expense of a 50 here. The 50 has been taken. John Devlin has taken the shot. He sent it wide. Well, the stopwatch says that there are seconds left in the game. Referee looking at his watch. Paddy Collins kick out to the centre of the field. Alan Larkin to Brian Mullins to David Hickey to Paddy Riley. Paddy all alone. Jimmy Keaveney. That was an intended one to Bobby Doyle. Referee calling for the ball and the game is over. And Dublin are all Ireland champions of 1977. And the players hugging one another after the game. And the Jimmy Keaveney, the man who has made his own personal record, putting his arm around Paddy Moriarty, whose fault it was not that Armagh were beaten today. Jimmy Keaveney, with a total of two goals and six points, has set a new personal record in an All-Ireland final. And those two goals, how well they were scored by him. And uh, such indeed is the excellent control here by Stewards and Garthy that there is no question whatever of any overflowing into the uh, field. There's a good crowd out there, all right, but certainly all the people that uh, spoke and what have you about all the terrible things that were going to happen in Croke Park today, well, the only terrible thing that happened was from an Armagh point of view when they were well and truly beaten by a Dublin team who truly merit, above all, that adjective of great. They proved it against Kerry, they confirmed it today. Dublin 5-12, or, yes, Dublin 5-12, Armagh, three goals and six points. Well, they're coming over now for the presentation of the Sam Maguire Cup. Many jerseys being swapped down there by players. In fact, I think when you see them coming up for the Cup, an awful lot of Dublin men will be wearing orange jerseys because they will have swapped them with the men from Armagh. And Armagh, but for a spell of about 10 minutes in that second half, they somehow or other didn't really get going. It could be that they were opposed by the real champs. Down in under us, the subs have gathered and all the various officials. Jack Lynch there on the right, complete with the pipe. And the president there on the left, that's Mrs. Lynch in on the center, Dr. Hillary. And the joy of victory. Paddy Cullen, a proud and happy man at saving that penalty. I know Paddy would take it as almost a personal insult that there was a goal scored against him earlier, but he certainly made up for it. Tony Hanahoe, Captain Bernard here. Tony Hanahoe raises the Sam Maguire above his head. 